A few weeks ago, I was looking for a good idea and I couldn't quite remember where I'd left one. And then I found one on my desk. My name is Brent and welcome to Ground Affected and I'm going to show you how I'll make this thing better. Now I already know that there is a lot of questions and I'm going to do my best to answer as many of them as I possibly can in this video right now. Now of course if you want to make a model like this which drives such in the manner that this one does, you're going to need a tank. Not just any tank, this is the Rhino. I got mine from Ground Affected Studios. And then we're going to have to start modifying this thing. And I'm going to start by cutting off all the plastic that I don't need on this model. Next I'm going to create the 3D files that I need to make the parts for the tank tracks to work. And for this I just use Tinkercad and I also use some files that I found from a guy who makes things called Yanni Kabelin. He made the thing called a tiny track and I modified these files from there. I'm also going to use this Sunlu resin that was given to me by Sunlu who uh, makes this new photopolymer resin. If I can figure out how to upload the files, I will upload the files and I will leave a link for them in the description. And once they're printed, I'm going to cure them in my broken UV curer. If anybody would like to sponsor me a washing cure station, that would be very nice. Next it was time to fit the servos and all the rest of the parts to this model. Basically, if you're going to use servos to drive the motors, you would need to get continually rotating servos. And this is what I got. I couldn't find the models of the ones that I ordered because they were apparently out of stock after I had ordered them. Because I think everybody is making one of these. Perhaps, or perhaps these are just out of stock because they were the last ones in stock. Who knows? But basically, you need continually rotating servos. And for bearings, I used 12 by 4 by 4 millimeter bearings. And they fit in the part that I made because I made them fit the part. I printed out all the tracks as you can see and I just sat and spent an hour or two putting these little pins which I cut out of a hard steel rod that you use for push wire for making RC airplanes. I then glued in those little pieces that I made to stick servos in and uh, used activator to make sure they stayed in. I'm not gonna lie, this is a terrible way of doing the servos. I have no other way of doing it and really I just wanted to make sure that this tank could drive at least just for a little bit. I didn't really know it was gonna work in the first place. So, you know, it's just how it is. This is the servo that I'm talking about. It's a very small micro servo. Actually, it's nano, not even micro, because micro was way too big to fit in this tank, apparently. I'm using a 5 volt BEC to regulate the power going to the servo so that I don't blow anything up. Then I soldered the power to the LED just to make sure that my BEC, which is a voltage regulator, is giving me the right current and is actually working. And I stuck that LED in place. It's not a real Space Marine tank if it doesn't have RGB lights. That's the rules. Now it is time for me to solder up the receiver to check that the receiver is actually receivering. 
I also soldered in one of the servos just to make sure that I could see some movement once I had got the receiver bound to my radio. So we put that in one, so I'm assuming it's on in. I think that basically means that all you've got to do is solder the two servos and then it's assign the channels in your radio to whatever of the radio you want. I think so, yeah, I think so, Use though. So maybe we just need to figure out a better way of mounting the servo. Okay, let's see. Okay, so maybe it needs a better servo. I redesigned the servo horn to give it a little bit more grip on the belt. It's gonna work, it's good, it's like so good. Those, that little extra bit on those gears fucking made it's, it so that good. That is definitely it, bro. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus! <laughs> if I don't get 100,000 views. <laughs> <laughs> I used plastic card to fill in the gaps that was left over from stretching the sides of the tank to make the tracks fit. And then use Citadel Black Primer to prime the entire model. If you would like to see the full painting of this model, there is a link for my Patreon where the full video of the painting for this model will be shared, as well as to anybody who joins as a member to the channel. So we're just going to use some editing tricks to get through this painting a little bit quicker. And once I've done a white line around everything just to irritate everyone, I called my model done.
hope is that this video inspired you to do something crazy with your models, whether it be 3D printed or the Warhammers. And yes, there are many more other models than just 3D printed and Warhammers, but maybe this video might have inspired you to do something different. And speaking of inspiration, it is at this point that I would like to say super special thank you to my inspiration, which is the Patreons. And right now I would like to say special thank you to the newest Patreons we got this week. Pedro Gomez, Robert K, David Carpenter, and Danny3L underscore DK. Thank you, my dudes, because if it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't have these lights blinding my eyeballs. And I really appreciate that. I've always said this, but if you join the Patreon, you get nothing. Except you do get access to the best Discord of 3D printers and model painters that ever did exist upon the internet. Now obviously I hope you enjoyed the video, and of course if you did, make sure to leave some words in the little square box below that YouTube gives you to leave some words in. And this is about the time where I tell you, if you didn't like what you saw in this video, I don't really care. Just click the dislike button and then f*** off. And now I'm gonna go drive over somebody's necrons.